and we were looking at the mag the force that is applied to a moving charge through a magnetic field. Okay, so the charge has to be moving. It's a cross product relationship, so we saw that the if the charge is moving in the same or opposite direction of the field, there's no force. So there has to be an angle between them. And they were looking at a, the special situation of a charge moving where the magnetic field was perpendicular to the velocity. And so we had B pointing out of the page like this. And remember, again, this is a magnetic field due to other moving charges, not to this particular charge, due to a mag bar magnet or something like that. And uh, we said, okay, V cross B, thumb points that way, multiplied by a positive charge. We get a force in that direction. We saw this force is then going to always stay perpendicular to the velocity. So will the speed ever change? No. The, if the force is perpendicular, right, there, there's, if there's no component of the force in the direction or in the opposite direction of the velocity, the speed stays constant, but what changes? Direction, right? So we get circular motion, okay? So we saw a couple examples last time of circular motion. I just wanted to show one more application of this. Um, early in the days of particle physics, how did you actually get particles to accelerate? What was the, early, the earliest type of particle accelerator? Well, that was called a cyclotron. And sometimes this motion is called cyclotron motion just for that reason. Uh, this is a mock-up, vPython mock-up, of, of a cyclotron. Okay? Basically, the cyclotron consisted of two, uh, they actually called them Ds because they were shaped like the letter D, but sort of two halves of a cylinder. Okay? Uh, you ran a, or you had a uniform or mostly uniform magnetic field pointing upward like so through the, the circle here. And then the, uh, the yellow vectors or the orangish vectors are electric field vectors. And so in between the, the two halves, in between these two Ds, you have a, uh, a potential difference. Okay, So you maintain a voltage which creates an electric field. Electric field or electric forces can accelerate charges, right? Because if you have an electric field, the force is going to be in the same direction or opposite direction of the electric field. And so if you have a charge just sitting here and you have an electric field applied, then you're going to have a force that's able to get the charge moving, okay? So what if we have, say, a positive charge in between these two halves in between these Ds, electric field pointing in this direction. And so we somehow are able to insert a, a proton or something like that. And I don't know if you can see this, but you see this proton start to move. Okay, And so it accelerates. And down below, I'm plotting, I'm not sure if you can view this, I'm plotting the energy as a function of time. So while it's in between the, the two halves, and notice that the electric field direction keeps oscillating to give it the push in the correct direction, and it oscillates with a particular frequency, which we could calculate if we knew the magnitude of the magnetic field, for example. It increases the speed, and we saw last time, we worked out how QVB equal to MV squared over R. And so there was a late relationship between the speed and the radius. Okay, So V we could calculate as equal to Q. B, R over the mass of the particle. The faster it's moving, the bigger the radius it's going to get. And so we keep increasing the speed of this proton, changing the direction of the electric field every so often so that it, we give it the boost in the correct direction. But the magnetic field keeps it trapped, keeps it moving around a circle. So every time it goes through the electric field, it gets a boost of energy. And every time, it, and when it's in the magnetic field, the energy here stays uh, stays constant, okay? So we're able to speed up the charge, we're able to accelerate it, and then when it finally reaches the uh, the edge, which is going to take a little while, but when it reaches the edge of the, the, the cylinder, we could let it go, make it shoot off on at some other particle and collide it with something, okay? So cyclotron, early, early type of 
of particle accelerators just based on electric and magnetic forces. Okay. 